and Douglas with VMworld TV. Say, Douglas, I've heard there's a lot of interest in tier one application virtualization this year. Do you think maybe we should see if we can check some out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a SQL and an SAP session going on today. Why don't you take uh, SQL and I'll go talk to the SAP guys and uh, round back up and see what we can get out of them. All right, sounds good. Great. Let's see you. I'm standing outside of the Design, Deploy, and Optimize for Microsoft SQL 2008 session. Let's get some feedback from some of the people that were in there. Hi Kendall, you just left the SQL class. Did you learn anything that you didn't already know? Yes, I learned a great deal uh, regarding their best practices on how to configure uh, your databases. My DBA, he's going to love it. I've been texting him already. He's excited. He can't wait to see all the uh, information that I'm going to bring back. One of the things that I was trying to find out was what's the current state of doing SQL Server on VMs now because our original experience was back under version 2. And he did speak to that. And um, the capacities are greatly increased. So I've got to talk to people and say, hey, the world has progressed. We should really seriously consider this now. Hi, I'm here with Scott Salyer, who just got done with this design, deploy, and optimize for Microsoft SQL 2008. Scott, I've been talking to some people as they came out. The session looked packed. Most of the people are saying great things. I'm getting very good feedback. A couple have already been doing a lot of this stuff themselves. They weren't super surprised by what you've told them. Uh, a number of people mentioned some new features, some hot, hot add capabilities. Maybe could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. With uh, SQL Server 2008 and uh, vSphere, we have the ability to hot add CPU and memory to a running VM, which means that no longer do I have to shut down the SQL Server to add resources to it. If transactions start to go up and latency starts to go up, we can, on the fly, add processor and memory to the running SQL Server without interrupting the end user. That sounds fantastic and sounds like something people have been asking for for quite a while. Are there other things coming that people need to be aware of? I, I was talking to some folks and they were saying they still need to convince their DBAs that this is going to work. And you guys are telling us that it's going to run faster in virtualization than on physical. Is that really true or is that just marketing hype? Well, it's kind of, a, it's a little bit of a trick of upgrading hardware. Okay, so if I'm running a SQL server today on a physical server, let's say it's been in production for five years. That's five-year-old hardware. Got it. So now I'm moving to a new platform, even though I'm virtualizing and incurring a small penalty for virtualization, sometimes the move to newer hardware will uh, counteract that to the point where you see a uh, performance improvement. So it's really a combination of things. It's not only the improvements to VMware virtualization, it's that plus maybe the updated SQL Server content and also the faster hardware. Yeah, absolutely, that's right. It's a team effort. Is there anything else that you wanted people to know that maybe they didn't uh, catch in your session? If they weren't able to attend your session, is there maybe like one or two bullet points that maybe we can share with them? Well, I think the number one thing is uh, you know that we can scale to the large SQL Server workloads. Uh, in fact, most of them. We can scale to eight virtual CPUs, 255 gigabytes of RAM. I think the other thing I would mention is if you want application level high availability, utilize SQL mirroring. That gives you the best of both worlds. You get application availability, you get VMware availability, you get no restrictions on the type of disk that you use. It's overall the best and most flexible solution. That's great. I actually talked to some people on the way out who were saying that they were finally actually ready to look at putting their larger databases into virtualization because of what you just told them. Oh, so wonderful. thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Right. Have a great rest of the week. All right, thank you. Hi, Douglas with VMworld Television, here to interview Voss and Todd. So you guys just did a great session talking about uh, SAP, Tier 1 Applications, running and virtualization, right? Yes, we did. That was uh, pretty well attended as well. That's great. Um, one question uh, I, I always hear, right? So a lot of our customers want to deploy Tier 1 Applications, virtualized performance. I mean, really, is the performance as good in a virtualization environment? So, you know, it, it really is today. It's very, very close. You know, if you go back a couple of years or more, there were some, some, some performance issues that really did exist. Uh, but with the advances both in ESX with 4.1 and with the new hardware chips, the processors from Intel and AMD, uh, the performance gap has really closed a lot. So in the, the test that we've done in our labs today, we're only seeing about a 5 to 7% difference in performance between virtual and native uh, environments running SAP. All right, that sounds good. And uh, I guess my other big question is with uh, integration and support. Um, I mean, to SAP, do we work with them closely? Do they fully support running in a virtualized environment, on, on vSphere that is? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. We have a close partnership with SAP, and SAP have provided full support for their applications on VMware, everything uh, on NetWeaver 6.4.0 and above. 
Um, SAP themselves are a big user of VMware and they have their own heavy investment in uh, virtualization. And for example, they have done some tight integration with our own vCenter. For example, you can now see uh, vCenter performance uh, metrics within inside SAP transactions to help SAP administrators uh, in a virtual environment. Also, SAP has a product called Adaptive Computing Controller, which is their product to manage a virtual landscape. That has now a plugin that uh, integrates with vCenter, so you can manage virtual machines with their product.